to a basement. Before she comes up, I want to read her bio. Malaysia Jordan is a certified bookkeeper who specializes in cleaning up and recognizing service-based e-commerce business, accounting, bookkeeping mistakes. She is the CEO and head bookkeeper at the Bougie Bookkeeper. She is renowned for implementing automated bookkeeping systems to handle the day-to-day -day needs, essentially by becoming your virtual back office. Malaysia believes a great bookkeeper will always save you more money than they will cost you. Malaysia has helped several small businesses save thousands on taxes, legal compliance fines, and costly mistakes. She has helped all her clients reach a new level of success and profitability by providing accurate reporting. Currently, she is educating small business owners in basic bookkeeping skills and QuickBooks training through her exclusive workshops. Let's welcome Malaysia Jordan.
what you want from me right now. Sometimes it's just about God's will. It's just about him wanting you to step outside what he's doing in the region, what he's doing in the church, what he's doing in your business, what he's doing in your job. We're so quick to be like, Lord, this job ain't paying me enough. These people ain't being on my nerves. <laughs> Not to know that you are the one God called to be in that place. You are the peace. Your prayers over your coworkers. Your prayers over your job. Your prayers every time you get up every morning to text that place. And I'm blessed enough to go to the marketplace and pray over this. And through those prayers, I've seen people prosper. But if I would have stayed here, if I would have stayed where I was comfortable, if I would not have thought bigger, I would not have touched people. I would not be standing before you today. When we continue, when we confine ourselves in our boundaries of familiarity, we limit our growth and hinder our potential. Now, we're in June. We're six months into the year. And one thing that I did was, I, we saw last week, I sat down at home, so I think to myself, I made all these goals at the beginning of the year. Y'all did. And some I accomplished, some I'm still in the progress of accomplishing. But the Lord was like, I want you to do something. I want you to get this paper. And he had to draw a circle. And in the middle of that circle, I wrote comfort zone. And outside that circle, I wrote not my comfort zone. And he had to write everything inside of that circle that I was comfortable with. I was comfortable staying at home behind my desk. I was comfortable not going out with people. I was comfortable with not traveling from state to state. And then he said, draw a line outside that circle to everything that will make you not. So I started drawing all those lines before I knew what I feel with the whole paper. Hmm. And that's in that moment I realized God had called me to discover even more. Hmm. Sometimes you can reach a certain pinnacle and think, okay, I got the money, I got the clientele, or I'm doing, I got this, I got that. God's not like, no, oh, baby. Because it's not about what you want. It's not about what your will is. It's about what I want. Amen. Get our women, get our businesses that can change if you step outside this comfort zone. If you step outside, I know you feel like you, you've done a little bit, but baby, I can take more. <laughs> I can do bigger than you That's right. God calls us to discover our true purpose and make an impact on the world around us. Pastor Susie right now is making an impact. Imagine she decided to never do this. Imagine she decided to be a first lady, to be a pastor, not, not enter into her calling. None of us will be here right now. None of you will be here in this message. In Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20, Jesus commands his disciples to go and make disciples of all the nations. This command extends beyond the disciplines of that time and serves as a call for each of us to step outside our comfort zone and share our faith with others, embracing the unknown, and trusting God to guide us along the way. When I mix my beliefs into the marketplace, sometimes I get pushed back, sometimes I don't. Being a young, black, female entrepreneur, especially a black female accountant, only 2% of all accountants and bookkeepers in the nation are African American. Hmm. So you can guarantee when I step into a room, nobody looks like I'm the only person there. But when you're called, you're called. Amen. And you can't let that fear that creeps up in your mind, creeps up in the stomach, stop you from going forward. Right. And there were times, there were times where I was like, Lord, I drove here, but nobody on that came. I can drive right back home. <laughs> but he was like, no. I called you to be here. And sometimes that fear of being the only person like yourself in that room is scary. You might not think they can understand you. And if God calls you to do something, I remember I was working with a business. Um, I was going to build a for them. And they were in a good position. And I didn't even want to break that news. And that's not easy. That's the ugly side of what I do. Trying to tell a business, hey, your revenues, you might have made a payroll. So I had to tell this business owner that. And she was lost. She didn't know what to do. And God said, pray for her. And that was the first time God had ever instructed me to pray for somebody while I was doing a job. Now, I didn't know this woman was a believer. I didn't know anything. All I know is that's all I could do to help her at that moment. So I said, man, can I pray for you? She said, absolutely. And we prayed together. And to this day, she said, I always remember when you prayed for me. And that 
push me to have faith. And now my business is still going. They made payroll. They made the food. Because sometimes you have a word inside of you that you just need to release. But if you're comfortable, sometimes you won't feel good enough to do that. So you have to step outside of our comfort zone. We are women on the rise. Yes. Rise does not mean one level. It means you are constantly elevated. You are constantly growing. You are yes. constantly getting bigger. And that's what's important. And, you know, we also live in a society that puts an emphasis on anxiety. Now, I would downplay it is a problem. But when you have God, when you have prayer, when you have faith, yes. that anxiety can be overcame. A lot of people like to use that. I could have anxiety, but I don't know how I want to come on here and talk to But no. Where I've been called, I really go. And that's that fearlessness we have to embody, even when we're afraid. I've learned in my long 28 years, <laughs> I've learned to do it afraid. That's the best way to do it. Because I've learned there's always something on the other side. Once I've forced myself to do it, it gets a lot easier each and every time you make yourself do it. Yes. Stepping outside our comfort zone may lead us to face uncertainties, challenges, and even failures. My goodness, I can write a book about that. When God called me to be an entrepreneur, and, and I've always known that I've been anointed and appointed to be an entrepreneur, I always want to be talking to a ministry within the marketplace. But taking that step of having a high-paying certain job to go into where now I have to chase people, I have to find clients, so I have to do that thing with so many challenges. Be that I'm young, you know, and at the time I didn't have mentorship, I was like, I'm your mentor, set out. So I had to go through this for myself, okay? Sometimes I got clients, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm almost to the end of the and somebody pulls out. Sometimes you're working with somebody and you face those challenges. But along the way, God has taken, it's not a month that hasn't went by, but God has not taken care of it. Amen. Amen. Even when I was like, Lord, I don't know. I'm Lord, I know you and God are always good, but I don't know Lord, how you're going to do this. And sometimes he does it, but he can put me far even in advance. So yeah, it's going to face challenges. It's going to be hard, especially entrepreneurship. I won't lie to you and tell you it's a walking park. It is not. Some days you cry, some days you're happy. Some days you can kick up your feet, some days you walk around on your face. It is a challenge. Life is a challenge, but God tells us that. He never told us that this journey was going to be easy. He's always told us, he always said he will be with us. So we walk the valley of the shadow of death. We should fear no evil. Thou art that's why you have to know your word. My grandmother, my mother always raised me to know my word because I need to be able to pull from it. Not from a sermon, not from a, a song. I need to be able to pull that word when it's time. <laughs> but the Bible assures us that our faith will be rewarded. In Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, we are instructed, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. When we surrender our fears and insecurities to God, he paves the way for our success, even in unfamiliar territory. I can write a book about insecurities. We all can, we are women. But God always paves the way, always shows you truly you are made to what you will do. Remember the story of David and Goliath? David, a young shepherd boy, stepped outside of his comfort zone, facing a giant who seemed invincible. But he trusted the Lord in the Lord's strength and defeated Goliath with a single stone. This story teaches us that when we trust God and step into the unknown, he equips us with the necessary tools to overcome seemingly immountable obstacles. That part. Okay? God will equip you where He gets called you. Yes. That's one of my favorite things I ever heard. 
he will be quick to win for what he called you. And sometimes it may not seem like it, it may not feel like it. But everybody has it already inside of them. Sometimes we feel like, God, I don't know. I don't know this is called, so I don't know this is what you called me to do. But if you are quick to do that, then he has called you to be there. So we have to embrace the challenges that lie behind our comfort zone, knowing that God is by our side. So when you go home today, draw that circle. In that circle, right, your comfort zone. Some of you are supposed to be up here today. Some of you are supposed to be right where I am at, speaking to these ladies. Because you have a word, you have a testimony. I'm going to eat your testimony to me now. Sharing what you've been through in life. Some of you have books inside of you. Some of you have ministries inside of you. But it's about embracing it. And stepping outside of what you're comfortable with. Like I said, it will not be easy. It's scary. It's scary. But God will be there the whole journey. And you'll be surprised when he calls you how easy it is that people will take that message. I've been told plenty of times that I can speak to young and I can speak to old. And that is not me. That is God. So we have to seize the opportunities to grow, to learn, and to serve others. Guided by the principles of love, compassion, and faith. In conclusion, stepping outside our comfort zones with God can be a transformative journey. It requires courage, trust, and unwavering belief in God's guidance. Let us not be confined by our fears, but rather embark on the path of growth. Knowing that God will lead us to fulfill our true purposes. As we take these steps, we will experience the joy, fulfillment, and blessings that come from living a life of faith beyond our comfort zones. Thank you. Thank you.